Hey guys, so this was just a quick video I did during a Friday evening during a Geneva 1x1 event. I'm not going to be doing a full flight briefing for the departure. Uh, I've attached the sim brief uh, flight release down below and uh, I'll ask you guys to let me know in the comments whether I should be doing the full flight introductions. It kind of makes my production process a lot longer and these videos take already a long time to cut and edit. So. Let me know if you guys want me to do a full uh, pre-flight briefing or whether we should just jump straight into the video. So without further ado, let's go to the airplane and start setting up for the flight. All right, so there we are. We are parked at position number Bravo 3. Uh, we, start, we should start setting up pretty quickly. We've got about 20 minutes until departure. And uh, let's start setting up, uh, listen to the ATIS and all the pre-flows. So let's step in. The airplane is powered up currently. We are running on external power and we'll need to do the quick pre-flight here. So generators are coming on. Everything else here is looking good. 3B hydraulic system is on. Let's turn up these lights and let's turn up these guys. Just going to check my controls here. Make sure that they're working all right. They are. Uh, everything else here is looking good. Yacht Amper's on. Harris is going to nav and we'll do a quickly start starting the alignment here. So we are at Lima, Sierra, Golf, Golf. And grab the reference position here. I cannot key in the position manually. We are going to Echo Delta Delta Foxtra. We'll be departing on runway 05, presumably. We'll listen to the to what the controllers give us. But for now, we are uh, for going to be departing on Molus 3 November. We'll assume that. After Molus 3 November, we're going out to um, Uniform November 871, Uniform November 871, down to Dighton. So Delta India Tango Oscar November. Dighton, after that it's going to be Tango 163, down to Pop Up Sierra Alpha. And that's the route. After that, we'll get a star into. Uh, into uh, Frankfurt. Okay, we're gonna be flight level flight number CLH one two two seven. We're hands aligned twelve twenty seven. Execute that. Go to perfinit thrust limiter. The outside air temperature is at this point twenty seven degrees, so two seven. And we'll take a, a performance D rate of down to ninety four percent. That's gonna give us a good takeoff speed. Set up my V speeds here. Get rid of the yoke here. They're set up here on this uh, primary flight display down here. So go down and this guy, and we'll be weighing about 49 ish thousand. So 49,000 pounds gives us a uh, V1 of uh, 132, but we're 27 degrees up, so we'll be plus two, so 134. V rotate is going to be 135 plus 1 due to the temperature. So 136. Uh, sorry, V1 should have been 134, but never mind that. I'll get to that in a second. V2 is going to be 142. IRS have just aligned. Let's select V1 again and get that down to 134. For the target takeoff speeds, I'll also do m select my VFTO on the chart here, which is 182. That's going to be a our second segment climb. And for the initial climb speed, up to the acceleration height of 1,000 feet, we'll fly at V2 plus 15, which will be 157. Uh, that's about there. Okay, let's get rid of that. I'll select everything else uh, once we get the clearance. I need to actually let's turn off the weather radar and the marker audio. I don't need that. I need to talk to uh, listen in the ATIS. ATIS is going to be on frequency 3557. So 35, 
official contact. You have information. Mic, report, aircraft, type, mm, I need to request contact some, ref with some fuel as well. Arrival. We'll be flying with 3,000 pounds in each tank, so we'll request 2,000 extra and 2,000 that's already in there. Zero map report. Geneva at time one a two zero UPC with zero five zero degrees three knot visibility one zero kilometers. Connected. Yeah, we are. Five thousand three hundred feet temperature two. 72.11 QNH 1020. No significant changes expected. Advise on initial contact. You have information. Mic report. Aircraft type. On full contact with Geneva arrival. This is Geneva information. Okay, we'll contact ground here. now. 12167. We'll get a clearance from them, and after refueling is completed, we'll get with the passengers on board. Okay, let's turn on the signs as well. And we'll get the controller here. Judy McGround, good evening. Hansel line 1227 <coughs> at Bravo 3 with information Mike, uh, radio copy clearance to Frankfurt. Hansel line 1227, stand by, I call you back. Oscar Edgar India Romeo Foxtrot, have you copied I for clearance? I for Romeo cleared the um, depth cure 5 November departure from the May 0 5 and after that cure we will continue on the way. Okay, so departure runway is going to be 0 5, so I'll just set that in here. That's a little bit too fast on the scrolling there. Oscar Edgar India Romeo Foxtrot, airway is going to be 0 5 and after that cure we will continue on the way. Okay, so departure runway is going to be 0 5, so I'll just uh, QNH1020, QNH, e, sorry, Quoke is 673. Okay, we need to grab the QNH. 1020. Oh, let's scroll close enough. It's really kind of sensitive here. On the line, 1227, Geneva, round with you. On the line, 1227, ready. Hunter line 1227, clear to Frankfurt of runway 05, Molus 3, November departure, cloak 6734. Runway 05, Molus 3, November departure, squawking 6734, Hunter line 1227. Okay. Hunter line 1227, you read that is correct. Startup is approved, and for pushback and taxi contact. Geneva apron one two one decimal eight five. Uh, Startup approved to one two one decimal eight five for uh, pushback and taxi. Uh, Hansel line one two two seven. Okay. So I'll pre-tune the guy there. Twenty one eighty five. Twenty one eighty five here. Come on. 2185, we'll switch to the, this guy, we're clear for starting. Okay, runway 05 is confirmed, Mole yeah, 3 we push, uh, we start the push back? Okay, I'm just gonna quiet uh, these guys. Quiet these guys down, I'll return to a different frequency to get uh, my head cleared out here. I need to do some checklists. And for that I need to grab my checklist app on my phone. Okay, we'll go straight to the before start checklist, and we'll do that in a sec while, once we load the passengers. We've got about 10 minutes until departure, go over here to weight and fuel, and we'll load in so that we have a total weight. We would expect to have a weight with our passengers of almost 49,000, so we'll just add in passengers until we're, we're, until we're there. Okay, there we go, that's about it. That's about right. Okay, nav source should be FMS here, and that's okay. Okay, let's see the departure briefing here. So runway 05, for that I need to bring up my airfield chart here. AFC, so... 
let's go in order from the parking uh, from taxi to takeoff to departure and emergencies so we're parked at Bravo 3 which is the south apron area we are, I expect a taxi on the outer taxiway which is going to be just over here to the left and then out to the Remy 05 holding point which is uh, labeled Gulf from there take off uh, in the northeasterly direction heading 045 is set where are you there is 045 on the heading bug one more thing we need to check the uh, initial climb restriction model 3 November initially is going to be up to 9 or 0 so 9 or 0 transition here is 7000 feet just check that on my chart here yep 7000 is transition altitude so okay, we initially we will be flying, so we'll s stick that straight into nav. So flight director is going to be on speed and nav, and uh, we'll control our speed with the pitch. Let's bring up the uh, Lex page here. The procedure calls for initially flying up to petal, which is up 5,000 or above, and then straight to mollus. 10 or above, flight level 100 or above. Okay, we got that in. The minimum sector altitudes here are 7,000, 10,600, and so on, 12,000, even further out. So about 7,000 within about a 10 nautical mile radius of the airfield. Uh, in, uh, in the case of engine failure, uh, we would want to continue straight ahead, stay over the lake or somewhere close to it and we'll be holding over either the Geneva VOR or some other assigned radar vectors. Okay, that's the uh, departure briefing completed. After that, let's just check our route here. So we'll take this guy over here to the last mode. Bring that up and over here. We'll check our route. So Petal, Molas, Ocel, and this is all looking exactly as my flight release predicts. Just check this card, kind of kink here. And yet, since then the flight release as well. We'll be flying flight level 280, so I'm happy with that. Okay, let's stick this thing back into regular mode. Range is gonna go down to 10 miles initially. Okay, we got everybody on board. We'll close up the doors here. Contact ground and get on the way. Get on with it. Come on. Close the door. Fire up the APU here. Just check my systems here. ECS is looking good. My new hydraulics quantities are looking good. And the fuel quantities got 3,000 each tank. That's looking okay. So go back to the status page. It'll beep at us. There it is. So APU is available. Open the APU valve. It'll beep again. And packs are coming on. Check our ECS here. That's okay. We'll turn on the APU generator. And check the electrics. And the electrics are also looking good. So we can now disconnect external power. So I'll take the DC service away. External power is disconnected. Our external power is disabled. Now we need to disconnect it. Okay, we're off of external power. And we'll do the before start checklist. And also the clear to start checklist. So passenger signs, one more thing. One more thing, I didn't set my pressurization for Frankfurt. Because this airplane, of course, has manual pressurization controls. So I've got a status page and try to pop it up once I get the click spot right. Spin this thing around. Field elevation at Frankfurt is 300 feet, so we'll need to bring this over a little. There, there it is, 300 feet. Close that down again, and we'll do the before start checklist. Passenger signs are set, pressurization is set, altimeter is set, anti-skid test not simulated, FMS IRS are set and aligned, navates and radios are set, parking brakes are on, takeoff briefing was completed, 
clear to start checklist. That's gonna come in once we are ready for the startup for real. So, got about five minutes until departure. I think that's the correct time we should start up our engines here. Okay, close this down. Actually, let's bring, put this thing over to the thrust limiter page. So, start a procedure. We'll go over to the overhead here. First thing, so let's check all these guys. We didn't do the fire detection test because they're not simulated in this model. It's a rather reduced fidelity model. Turn on boost pumps. Turn on the main fuel, fuel pumps. Uh, we got an even day, so it's going to be starter A. Hydraulics are coming on. And packs are off. Beacon light is on. Now I'll do the before the clear to start checklist. APU and AC electrics are on. Papers are checked and on board. Takeoff data is checked. Doors are closed. Beacon is on. Fuel pumps are on. Hydraulic pumps are on. Parking brake is set. Packs are off. Ignition is A. And ready to start the engines. Okay. Starting sequence is going to be number two, then number one, so right engine, then left engine. We're going to be starting here up on the uh, apron while we are parked. We don't have to push back. We're going to be turning straight out here to the left. We're parked in a row of airplanes. Okay, number one starter, please. I'm sorry, number two starter. Waiting for about 20%. And then we'll move the fire hand. There we go. Engine startup. Engine is stable. Number one. Oil pressure is also looking good. Start up, so fuel the fuel in. Waiting for ITT to top out. Gonna keep my hand here on the fuel control. As you would do, of course. Okay, ITT is coming down. Engine is accelerating now to idle. And the starter has cut out, so we can now Wow, everybody's floating. What are my rendering settings here? I do have runway follow terrain cont contours. We are probably sunk into the ground for these guys. Well, never mind that. And we got a fair amount of traffic here, as you can see. Okay, so ignition is off. Air conditioning is on. Boo boost pumps are off. Generators are on. Everything else here is on. Check the ECS page. We're looking good, so we can actually turn off this guy, and we can turn off that guy as well. Hydraulics running, electrics are looking good, fuel is all happy, and that makes me happy after starting items. So we got this thing is all set up. We'll flick the thrust reverses into the arm position. Flaps are going 20 degrees. And transponder is going to come on as soon as we start moving. Or rather, or rather, I think, yeah, Geneva doesn't use the transponder on the ground. So after start checklist, generators 1 and 2 are on, ignition is off, packs are on, anti-ice not required, actually probe heats need to come on, we'll have uh, windshield heat to low. APR is not simulated electrics. Uh, good rudder is uh, check. We'll do that in a second here. And those wheel steering is armed. Flight controls check. So check all of these guys. Check the rudder. This is all good. So I'm happy with that. Flight controls have been checked. So taxi checklist flaps are set. Flight controls have been checked. Actually, we need to do set the stab trim here. Usually what I find is that I have to do, I have to put my stab trim in order to fl for the thing for the thing to fly correctly way up here, about 10.5 units. So that's way off, but 
I don't know what's going on there. Uh, just just do whatever works here. Thrust reverse are, are armed. Flight instruments have been checked. We're heading uh, pretty much parallel with the runway, so heading showing 043, 1400 feet. That's field elevation here. And everything else here is good. Next is going to be the before takeoff checklist. We'll contact ground for taxi. We're doing the apron here. And we'll give him a blast here. Geneva Apron, Hansa Line 127, ready for taxi. Hansa Line 227, taxi now to run it to 5, right uh, out. Land ready, tower 108, that's Hansa Line. Say again, please, the taxi instruction for Hansa Line 127. Apron South should be the thing. Apron South. On the line one two 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 seven. Taxi to run is two five. Straight ahead. Runway zero five. Uh, we're actually facing a northeast, but we'll make a turn around and taxi on outer. If I meant to understand right. On the line one two two seven. Okay, apparently he thought we were facing the other direction, so whatever. Now we're ready to taxi. So taxi lights are coming on and check. And that's okay, so brakes are coming off. Taxi now to runway 05, um, by the link 3 and out. Link 3 is the next straight to right. Okay, point zero nine zero five Adley three and four zero. I'm from zero seven four zero. We can get around the Ryanair just in front. There's uh, a jet air fly on link 3, any possibility we can go down to link 2 or link 1? Um, speed code 743, okay. Um, taxi via inner, um, around the Ryanair to 738 to link 2 and then okay, out well. to run into 5. Line up behind this guy Inter here. Down to link two and then up to the outers for zero five. Thanks. Zero seven four zero. So we're gonna be number three for takeoff. I'm gonna get tower into my standby here. One one eight decimal seven. That's pre-tuned and yeah, everything else here is looking good. Good evening, KLM 999 Yeah, it's rendering as, it's if, as if these airplanes were Air Alaska. Of course, they are not. KLM 999 Lima, push. Um, you are able for taxi. Direct taxi. Um, negative. I'm taking the channel. I need some pushback. KLM 999. Okay, KLM one nine nine Lima, no problem. Push back approved. Um facing south. Okay. Holding short now, parking brake is set. Push back. Let's see if we can make the departure somewhat on time. Speed back four two zero. Speed back seven four two tower one on eight decimal seven ready for departure. Break break, counter line one two two seven, when ready, tower one one eight, decimal seven. Eighteen seven, Hansa line one two two seven, thanks. Geneva Tower, Hansa line one two two seven, uh, holding short of runway zero five behind uh, seven three sevens here on the on outer. 
On the line, one, two, two, seven, seven, good evening. Your departure in about eight minutes. Okay, eight minutes, that suits us just about fine. I'm going to be about two minutes late uh, on the departure. Seven, four, we, we can speed that up a little bit. Keeper 7480, good evening, about ten minutes. There's some landing traffic here. And A320. Okay, there's apparently a speedbird here. He got cleared up. Okay, this guy should shift ahead. We'll follow him. Okay, parking brake is off. Hand on the nose wheel tiller. <laughs> Approach is going to be 131 32. I'm going to be pre tuning that as well. Swiss 1825 Compact Geneva Apron. Compact Chinese Way from on one to one decimal eight five zero. Bye bye. Oscar Romeo Fox Shop, wind zero by three degrees, three knots from my sofa to the takeoff. Take off. That's this guy. So he's another speed bird. Sabina 404, behind the parking across the line of the way to only show us. Line of the way behind the taking of the aircraft the 05, Sabina 404. Okay, he's going to be lining up and we'll hold short of the runway then. We're currently at the ILS holding point for the CAT 2, CAT 3 approaches. Apparently, uh, CAT 2, 3 ops are not in service at this point, so. Obviously, of course, we got nice weather, so we don't need to hold here. Now, the reason for these things is because you have the glide slope antennas and are ex extend out to uh, the glide slope antennas are not actually directly on the runway. Obviously, they are sort of. They extend a little bit out there. Also, I've got a Romeo Fox so continue our arrival on 131 decimal 320. Have a nice life. Bye bye. So the ILS protection area is basically to serve so that we don't interfere with the ILS glide slope signal when we're lined up here. Because obviously you don't want to have a antenna and park a bunch of uh, aluminum in front of it. That's going to affect reception down close to the antenna, so that's why they don't, that's why there's an ILS protection area, but you don't, you generally ILS protection areas are not enforced uh, if the final portion of the approach is uh, flown visually, which is typically the case for Cat 1 ILS. Sabina 404, wind 0 by 30 degrees, 3 knots, from wind 0 5 degrees for takeoff. Okay, we'll line up after that guy. We'll give the cabin a call there. And we'll be next on the line up there. So let's do the uh, checklists here in a second. Just gonna check the approach sector. That doesn't appear to be anything there. On the line one two two seven behind the aircraft line up and wait runway zero five behind. Line up and wait runway zero five on the line one two two seven. Okay. As I said, approach sector is clear. And lights are coming on. So being a four two four company can you arrival on one two one decimal two zero have a nice line. Bye bye. Taxi lights Steve are not uh, required. Uh, Steve arrival 131 decimal 32. Thanks for hearing this is Sabina 404. Ok, 
Okay, feet on the brakes before takeoff checklist. Lights. Actually, one more thing. We want to turn on the transponder here. Fuel cross flow ignition is not required. Flight attendants advised. Transponder and TCAS not simulated. Radar SAS. Impacts are going to be on before takeoff checklist is complete. Got some other traffic over there. Gonna pop these guys out, pop that one out as well so that I can switch over to climb thrust limit once I get to a thousand feet up. That's right, our temperature's kind of changed, but that's not a problem. We can pop that in, though. It hasn't changed anything on our performance limitations. Okay. Doesn't say that we're on the line one two two zero one wing zero five three three train up from my zero five clear for takeoff. From zero five clear for takeoff. Hands on line one two two seven. Okay. Engines are stable. Applying full power to the limiter. Thrust is set, 80 knots. Steeper 13, 13, 13. Steeper 13, 13, I've seen the title of the evening. Are you ready to have a on the island? V1, right. Uh, Got positive rate, 1,000 feet plus. On the line one two two seven contact Geneva Rockwell on one three one decimal three two zero. Through one three two zero Hansa line one two two seven. Good day. Geneva arrival. Good afternoon. Hansa line one two two seven passing four thousand four uh, nine or zero. I'm sorry, passing three thousand. Okay, 1,000 feet is long past, so we'll reduce thrust to climb. Flaps going up to 8 degrees, and we'll speed up here to the target climb speed. And we'll turn on the autopilot as well. Sabina 404, contact with radar 128, decimal 055. Okay, flaps up, speeding up to 210. Uh, one, two, two, seven, uh, Jenny arrival, good evening, 4500, identified, climb to flight level 150. Climb to flight level 150, Hansa line 1227. Okay, didn't forget about us. Okay, 150, speed is going up. Uh, well, let's keep it on vertical speed. We'll set speed up to a climb speed of 240. And we'll let the thing climb at about plus 2,000 feet a minute. Flaps are up. Let's do the climb checklist. Landing gear is up. Flaps are up. Cross flow is not required. APU leads are on. Lights and passive signs are on. Thrust reversers need to be disarmed now. They are, and that's climb checklist complete. Coming up on petal, we should be 5,000 or above here, and we're going to be without any trouble. After that, we're going to get uh, Geneva, or sorry, Swiss radar, 
which is 12805, and we'll get that pre tuned in. So 2805. Okay, 240. So we'll re engage speed hold here and continue the climb here. Currently thrust limiter is on climb, our engine temperature 266 degrees on the ITT far off the red here so I'm happy with that. Okay, so that's most of the checklist that we have already completed. Turning now direct to uh, Molus or yep Molus. Apparently the autopilot overshot there a little bit. And I didn't turn on my weather radar. So that would have been a big problem there. But we had pretty good weather, so no problem here. Sinking the heading here. And we can admire the scenery for a moment. Lake Geneva here. Right underneath our butts. We're just about not be ab being able to see the airfield, but we'll take an outside view here. Alpha line one two two seven contact with radar on one two eight decimal zero five five. Have a have a nice flight. Swiss radar, hands line one two two seven. Have a good day. You right here, bomb call November I will make that flight to the Robert Richard. Here, Valdez, November maintaining level two. We should already set standard bear ref, so. 345 negative, maintain flight level 220. Maintain level 220, level 345. Swiss radar, good evening, Hansel on 1227, passing flight level 1264150. On the line one two two seven, says I now do evening identified to land flight level two eight four. Climb flight level two eight zero on the line twelve twenty seven. Okay, we got the clearance up to our final flight level. So we'll scroll this up to eight zero is set. We'll still be able to climb two thousand feet a minute. So that's pretty good. I'll take the turbines here. And Unicom 123 decimal I'm going to keep my handles here sort of synchronized with what the engines would want to do. And we'll turn on half bank. Half bank here. So that the passengers don't get shaken around that much anymore. Because we don't need to bank that quickly anymore. And once we're past this turn, I'm going to turn off the fasten seatbelt signs. And DD565, report your speed. Okay. After about 20,000 feet, the report CRJ speed. really loses a lot of power. So the climb is going to slow down quite a bit. Okay, synced up here. And we'll. There we go, seatbelt signs off. Everybody else Thank here, uh, so everybody should be back there and be able to get up and uh, go pee or whatever. You get a turn here to avoid crashing into a mountain. The bustling cities of Switzerland. Uh, Canadian Express, triple two, tell no. Max Direct BFP and Clear Direct 4. And, uh, okay, Wind has 
No, change so you are still not the other side. Okay. I'm going to be trying to keep the uh, and the ITT here at about 760 degrees. That'll give me maximum speed of the climb while not overstressing the engines too much. So we'll take out the perf performance limiter here, the thrust limiter. And we'll stick about 93 in here. And advance the turbine the powers here, power lever. Okay, I'm going to enter a thrust limiter of 95 for now. I'm going to be controlling the handles right now synchronized with my uh, physical throttles. I think it's approved. 1 8 would be transition altitude in the US. I want to maintain about 760 degrees on the ITT here so that we don't over tempt the engines and don't overstress it. Get some useful life out of that component. This is actually the, pr the primary sort of uh, stress component for an engine is the temperature here. It's not really the RPMs. An engine, as you can see, we're at 97% and 2 RPM, and usually an engine operates most of its life between 95 and 100% RPM. They're designed to run at that speed, so a couple of percent of RPM doesn't really affect them all that much. What does affect them is the ITT. If, if, if you run the engines too hot, uh, it'll do a lot of wear and tear on the turbine okay, blades and the turbine the nozzle uh, airfoils. And that's really stressful for the engines. So that's what I'm trying to maintain here. It's suitable uh, ter temperature here. Actually, you know what? We can turn off the landing lights now. That's, what, that's one of the reasons why I forgot to turn off the landing lights here it's at 10,000 is because I usually when I fly the CRJ I fly for United Virtual and uh, United has a policy of uh, keeping the landing lights up until transition altitude which in the States is uh, 18,000, 20,000 obviously so I have it sort of memorized as part of my flow whenever I switch over the barrel ref I turn off the landing lights, but obviously here I was kind of desynchronized because I didn't see 18 here, and I when I <laughs> did my bearer ref reset, so I didn't turn off my landing lights. Okay, let's close this thing out, and there we are. Uh, and we can bump the turbines again a little bit. Keep the climb up, as you can see, we're two, two, three, and we're barely doing a thousand two hundred feet a minute. So that's the thing that the CRJ is quite underpowered. Okay, so there we are on the climb. That's France over there, over the horizon. I couldn't set the clock to run here, obviously, because that's not simulated. This is a rather low fidelity <laughs> model. So otherwise, I would have started my flight timer here.
Turn three, off yeah, the panel yeah, lights yeah, here. Yeah, this nose wheel tiller. One, that's what I'm manipulating when I'm one, turning the, on the nose wheel of the airplane. Because the rudder usually on, on sort of airliner class airplanes and jet aircraft only controls the nose, wh e nose wheel within a fairly three. narrow band, usually about three or three or five degrees of deflection, and obviously that's not enough for a taxi. So you have so your nose wheel tiller is uh, is capable of doing much more deflection, usually somewhere around sixty to seventy degrees of deflection. So when you when you're taxiing on the ground, you're using the nose wheel tiller. And when you're taking off and landing, you're using your rudder pedals for the fine steering on the runway. And you can override, actually, uh, your rudder with the nose wheel tiller. So, so you basically, your nose wheel tiller has priority. If you hold it and you push down on the rudders, nose the nose wheel is not going to budge at all. That's how you actually do a flight con flight controls check for uh, the rudder while taxiing in order to not have your airplane running around, squirreling around the taxiway. You just hold the nose wheel tiller and then depress the rudder pedals to check their uh, check the rudder itself. Okay. How are we doing on attempts? We can go a little bit higher now. Uh, uh, hello, uh, good evening. This is. Okay, uh, 95% and 1, 98.3 and 2. I've got about 1,000, uh, 1,100 feet a minute. We got about another 2,000 okay, feet to go. Now, let's check our flight uh, release here. We should be around where should our top of climb be? Yeah, just a little bit after Konal and ahead of Dighton. So, the uh, on the CRJ, the banana, the banana here is uh, purple, and that's what's showing where you're going to be intersecting your uh, requested uh, flight level or uh, preset altitude that you have in your uh, autopilot. So, and our flight release uh, is expecting that we'll reach top of climb somewhere between Konal and Dighton. Actually, we're kind of climbing a little bit faster than I would have expected. I'm going to check my fuel here, because that's also part of your regular flight schedule. You have your uh, waypoints written out with the fuel, and I can never get my CRJ to actually match my flight release. Uh, so okay. it says at Konal we should have 4,280. 1,000 feet to go. We're actually running 3,800 in mains, so that would be kind of a worrying thing. Unfortunately, uh, what I know is uh, that Simbrief's uh, model of, uh, for the CRJ is actually expecting us to use less fuel during the climb and a lot more during a lot more fuel during cruise. So. Initially, after top of climb, fuel is going to be a little bit below the scheduled stuff, but it'll catch up once we progress further down the route. So it should all work out pretty much once we uh, work out pretty okay when we get to our destination. Okay. So we got a lovely sunset here. And we're just about to level off. Altitude, altitude capture. Altitude select. So we'll check our flight, uh, our speed here. We should be flying 446 true airspeed. And there's our true airspeed. So we'll go down here to grab the engines. Well, actually, we'll do it sort of by feel. I'm going to keep the engines high up for now in order to accelerate. As you can see, my speed selector right now doesn't do anything anymore. 
the CRJ does not have auto throttle. I'm going to be setting my speed here, speed control for now, just as a reference here, somewhere around 280, that's going to be our cruise speed. Okay, you're going to get a direct ladle, hands line 1227. So go direct intercept, ladle, go back here, stick that in, and we're going to scroll that over, set it into heading mode. And we got a direct here, which is pretty good. That means we'll be saving a bunch of uh, time and virtual money, virtual fuel currency. Okay, once we're established sort of on the heading, we want to go, so I'll execute the change here. Okay, so we'll take nine a nine second nine direct nine now nine and re-engage nav mode. Okay, now we're back in the control of the FMS. The, w the reason why I'm doing is that it, it this and way is yep. sort of to try and avoid to this sort of behavior it's doing right, right, right now. But yes. If I hadn't done this, it, it would have been much worse. Where the airplane sort of scrolls around, when, when you do a direct intercept, it just takes the direct position from right where you are, and obviously the turn takes a little bit, so it'll sort of hunt for the heading. <laughs> A little bit, so that, uh, that's a bit of a pain in the ass, so this way I'm able, able to avoid that. Okay, how fast do we need to go? 446 true airspeed. So it's probably 446 is a little bit higher, somewhere around here, maybe. I'm waiting for true airspeed to reach 446. We can actually pop up with these screens up so we can uh, admire the airplane while being able to fly it. Now isn't she a beat up old thing? All dirty and greasy. Weather refresh on the clouds there. She's a workhorse. Let's turn on the lights tin here if uh, you can't see. There we go, true airspeed just past what we want to go, so keep speed down, bring the engines down to about 89 ish. 452. Uh, okay, sorry, calling station, please say again. Break, break, uh, speed bird 514, for direct Lumen, Lima, uniform, Mike, Echo Lima. Okay, now we're establishing the cruise. We got a direct pretty far out. Okay. Uh, so that shortcut is pretty neat. Calling confirm that was, uh, uh, next. Frequency Not after that. this one yep. is going to be long and radar. It's going to be frequency 12162, so I'm going to pre tune that. Did I say 2162? 2762. 2762. So we'll pre tune that into nav 1. Need to slow down here a little bit because we're speeding about 10 knots faster than we want to go. And ask right the clouds here. Uh, let's actually pull it back a little more. We want to stay at about 450 ish at most. It's 
it's always a little bit you gotta play around play around with these uh, throttles a little bit because obviously there's no auto throttle so you're pretty much on your own and yeah we're about doing 290 so I'll just so I'll sync that up in here that way I know when we're departing the speed whether we're going slower or faster whether I need to speed up or speed or put more throttle in or less Oh, you got a contact over there? Some other traffic? Yeah, that guy's pretty far away. That's probably at least 3,000 feet above me. I'm a little uh, low-flying hunk of garbage, so... There you go. Okay, that's it for the climb and set up in the cruise. If something else interesting happens, I'll splice that in. If not, I'll see you closer to top of descent. On the line 127, contact on 127, enjoy that jet. Say again, please, the frequency for line and radar for Hansen line 127, please. On the line 127, Frequency is one two seven decimal seven two. One two seven seven two. Hansel line one two two seven. Thanks. Welcome. Enjoy. Long radar. Good evening. Hansel line one two two seven. Flight level two eight zero. Hansel line one two two seven. Long radar identified. When ready, it is time to reach flight level 110 at Spessart Clear at 250 transition. Flight level 110 at Speckart uh, VOR and uh, Speckart 25 Sierra transition. Hansa line 1227. Okay, so we're supposed to be at uh, 110 at this the, the PSA VOR. And we're cleared for the 25 Sierra transition. Now let's go over to arrival. So we're probably going to get Speckhart. It's going to be fun here. 25 Sierra and probably going to get 25 left here. I'm going to try and listen to the ATIS at the destination, see if we can get that already. 118.02 Okay, whoop, I shouldn't leave his frequency 118 decimal, let's set that up on the standby radio 118 decimal, actually I can show you how to do that in the uh, MCDU here because uh, the airplane here does control its radios through, through the uh, MCDU, so zero one one eight decimal zero two. Stick that into COM two, and we'll see if we can get the ATIS. Um, four QMH one zero one eight trend Nozick Frankfurt information echo out Frankfurt information echo net report time one eight five zero expect ILS approach runway two five left or two five right. Runways in use one eight two five center two five left and two five right transition level six zero wind two five zero degrees five knots variable between two three zero and two nine zero degrees Cascade temperature two three dew point one four QMH one zero one eight trend Nozig Frankfurt. Okay, we're gonna be ha having QNH one zero one eight. I expect ILS two five left approach. Uh, transition level six zero two five zero at five. So we got pretty much uh, wind coming straight along the runways with a little bit of wind shear and uh, cav okay. 23 degrees, balmy weather. Pretty good. Here, okay. 
Okay, let's program the arrival in. So, not the departure, but the arrival. Back in radar, good evening, Emirates 1, Lucy 50360. Arrival is gonna be um, PSA 25 Sierra. 25 Sierra for 25 left. And it's gonna be ILS 25 left. Let's check that out on the planning stage here. Take the range down quite a bit. Yeah, transition. Actually, let's do it like that. Okay. What are you doing, airplane? <laughs> okay, we're re-intercepting our course here. And yeah, let's execute that, and I'm happy with it. Okay. Sometimes this airplane is doing weird stuff, and I'm not really happy about that. But uh, this time it's going to be okay. So sync up the heading here in case it starts doing some really weird shit. We can re-engage heading mode here. Okay. So... We're pretty much set up here, and since we do not have a VNAV function... Okay, then, uh, what, five, uh, nine three our speed is 447, so that's pretty much on plan here. Okay, one, nine, so five, we can nine, just maintain three, the current ten, speed. Nine, one, six, and I'm happy with the way this thing looks here. Descending, uh, 160. So let's okay, bring up nine, our five, five, descent plan here, because uh, we don't have VNAV here, so we have to do it manually. So we're at 280, we're going to be at 110 at the Specart, so that's PSA, at Specart VOR, so that's over here, the PSA thing. It's 280 minus 11, so 28 minus 11, that's 17. And times 3, that's 30 plus uh, 21, so we're going to 51 miles out. We want to start our descent 51 miles away from... Direct Specker to Hansa Line 127. Even better, we even got a direct here, so we'll see the, d the distance right away. Specker VOR, execute, and we'll bank straight up to it. 84 miles out. So, once this distance here reaches 51 miles, if I'm not mistaken, we should start our descent. That way, we'll be able to do sort of an almost idle descent down to flight level 110 at Speckhardt. I'll just do a quick fuel check here with my flight release. We were passing about which one were we passing? We're about Covan. Yeah. As you can see, yeah, we were, we were expecting a Covan or Nelly somewhere between 3.3 .3 or 3.2 on the fuel, so we're getting the difference b between our flight release and our actual onboard fuel is getting smaller. That's the thing, but I mentioned that. The closer, the longer we stay on the cruise, the closer this thing will get to our flight release. Just, just really just a little bit of an algorithmic difference on the fuel planning. Okay. And apparently X-Plane has not loaded the uh, segment of terrain ahead of me just yet, so apparently the world's going to end in about 10 miles. Hopefully it'll get that done before we get there. That'd be embarrassing. We just flew off the world. Flew off the edge of the planet. Kind of a Discworld situation. Okay, we are about 20, maybe 30 miles out from top of descent. 20 miles out from top of descent. We'll do the arrival planning here, so I'll bring up my charts. So Echo Delta Delta Foxtrot, I'm using Navigraph charts here, the charts cloud. UDDF. Pull power back just a touch here. Okay. Minimum sector altitude at Frankfurt is 43 to the north, 35 to the south, and 
east and west, so we're going to be assuming minimum sector altitude to be 4300. We got uh, information echo. For the airfield, so that's not a problem. Transition level is 6 0. The uh, arrival here is going to be from Specart uh, 25 Sierra. It's an RNAV arrival. Which I absolutely cannot find my charts for. There we go, RNAV stars. And I don't have my chart here handy, but we've already been cleared down to spec art. That's going to be Charlie Hotel Alpha, and then out to the final approach course for runway 25 left. We're going to pre-brief runway 25 ILS 25 left. We'll see what we get actually on the on the arrival there. We may brief both of them, both the runways here. Go down here to radio and get our radio tuning ready. Uh, ILS frequency is 111.15, so 111.15 is going into the nav one radio here. And I'm going to get uh, the ILS frequency for 25 right ready just in case we need it. So that's 111.35. I'm going to be pre tuning that on my uh, SiteTac panel here. The, uh, the runways have the same uh, front course, so that's not going to be a problem. Okay, front course to the runway is 2.48 and uh, the procedure starts at 4,000 feet. Gonna check that down here with my legs here. Light gear 4,000. Correct, that's the final approach fix. From there it's gonna be descending. That's the final point before the runway. Then there's the runway and go around. That's the important portion here. At distance 5 from uh, Foxtrot Foxtrot Mike or the Delta Foxtrot uh, 290 fix or NAF fix I'm going to be uh, intercepting radial 242 out of Foxtrot Foxtrot Mike climbing up to 5000 and uh, whichever is later and then direct to Charlie Hotel Alpha and we're going to be holding there do we have a hold set up here? We don't at this point, so we'll get radar vectors in case we need to go around. But the procedure is straight out, climb to, climb, uh, to at least 5,000 uh, or distance 8, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Mike, so Frankfurt, a mine uh, VOR, and then turn left back to Char Charlie Hotel Alpha. That's the important part. We're gonna we want to stay to the left. In the case of uh, uh, the runway 25 right approach, it's going to be the other way around, going to be turning right. Okay, 45 miles out, we need to start the descent. So we'll get that down set up in here. We're going to go down to 11,000 or 110 one actually. 110 one set. Sync up the speed here. Go to speed hold. And we'll pull power back and we'll watch uh, to make sure we're intersecting Papa Sierra Alpha with our descent vector. At about 20,000 feet, I'm just going to turn on the fasten seat belt signs to make sure everybody's sitting down here. Sorry, I don't have time to look outside all that much. I need to look at my controls here because I am flying the airplane in real time. Let's see where the descent banana is. It's about there, so we can pull back a little bit more. Descending with the uh, with the CRJ is not really a problem. It's more the climb portion that's the hard part. But the descent right, is pretty one, two, easy. Six, Romeo, five, zero. Good evening. Yeah, well, let's just pull power all the way back here. Or we add power if we need to. Turn off half bank. One two eight zero five. So we're back to full banking capability. I want to be one one zero at Speckard VOR. Speckard six zero four. Contact the aim and radar. One two three. That's my mind. Two two. Okay, in range checks here. 
Pressure resistance is checked. Fuels checked 2700, that's good. Altimeters are ready. TCAS sound radar, CS landing data. We need to set up our landing data, which is something I forgot. Again. Landing weights for us are going to be 46,000. So our landing speeds here need to be set in. 46. So we'll go down here, take that over here. V1's going down away, rotate's going away. V2 go round speed at 46 is 148. And my target, which is going to be V approach, V ref is 140 knots. We'll take plus 5 and plus the steady headwind component, which is 5 knots, so half of that 2 knots. So V approach is going to be 147. Okay, landing data is set in, and that's the in-range checklist complete. I'll take power all the way back here. I want to make the descent uh, happen sort of reasonably. Now turn on fasten seatbelt signs again, have everybody sitting down. Uh, we don't, I don't think we need anti-ice here for now. Add a little bit more power. It's a little bit of a too steep descent. I don't want to be leveling off quite that early. So as I said, front course is 248. Did I say that? I did say that. So 248 is going to come in on the course once we turn off the NAF source over to the VORs. Now what's Frankfurt approach here? Just to check. One twenty point eight or one twenty point something. At one eighteen point five or one twenty point eight, I don't really know. So we're just gonna pre tune one twenty point eight. If that's the case, if if not, we'll do something else. We have Echo on board. Just check what's the current ATIS if there's anything changed. Information Fox Trot out. Frankfurt information Fox Trot. Net report time one niner two zero. Expect. I just, just had to quick read through that, so we have information Foxtrot. That's okay. Transition level hasn't changed, and nothing has changed pretty much. Okay, passing fifteen. Usually in United, at United we would already have the landing lights on a long time ago, and of course the transition as well. QNH is eight still. No differences there. It's gonna be for us. I think. I hope. Flying radar number 6527 pops with level one Okay, so make sure I'm not, not forgetting this, so I'm going to turn on landing lights now. Last light of the day. Lambda 657, Papa, Lang, Hallo, Hi, that's right. Minus 4 degrees approaching these clouds. A little bit tempted to turn on anti-ice. CRJ does have anti-icing condition detection, so it'll beep at us uh, if there's icing conditions here. Okay, let's see. Light radar, Hansaline 1227, just uh, nearing flight level 110, turning left, Charlie Hotel Alpha. 
I don't know if you forgot about us or something, or whatever. I'm just gonna slow down to 250 now. Uh, station calling, say again. Hansa line 1227, we're just leveling off at flight level 110 at Speckhardt. Hansa line 127, contact line, get 120, that's Motown. 120, decimal 80, Hansa line 1227, good day. On the line one two two seven long radar. Long radar hands on line one two two seven flight level one one zero. On the line one two two zero long radar. Good evening. I did information fox shot. Current on right heading three three zero descent flight level six zero. Heading 330 down to flight level uh, 9 or 0, Hansel Line 1227. Hansel Line 1227, negative, decent flight level 60. Down to 60, Hansel Line 1227. Okay. Hansel Line 1227, contact Frankfurt, direct at frequency 118.5, one one eight decimal 5, go by. 118.5, one Hansel Line 1227, good day. 118.5, it's going in. Frankfurt Director, good evening, Hansel Line 1227. Okay, this thing's going over to NAV 1. Hansel Line 1227, Hansel Director, good evening, identified expect ILS 25 left, descent altitude 4000 feet, QH 1018. Down to 4000, QNH 1018, Hansel Line 1227. Okay, 1018. It's about there. Come on, I can never get this thing right in hectopascal, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. We want to pull power back quite a bit. 10,000 feet has passed. We're going to do 10,000 feet check. AP bleeds are okay, TS not required. Passenger design cert altimeters are set. Next is going to be before landing checklist. Okay. I'm going to switch over to vertical speed for now. Give it about minus 2.1. And we're going to slow down to 2.10 here for the approach. We're going to get vector. I don't know whether guy forgot about me or I missed some message from him. Usually they're a little bit more pressing here. Actually, let's go down in here and do a direct intercept on LED key. So to make sure that the FMS is following our approach here. Oh, come on, man. This is the thing I want to do. What's that? I have to use, uh, for the first time in my life, I have to use a little bit of speed brake here. Okay, gonna advise the cabin here. Make sure now we're about on to reach final approach. Okay. 20, 215, roughly thereabouts. On the line, on the line, 1227, turn left heading 220, clear ILS, 25 left. Left heading 280, on the line, 1227, ILS, 25 left. Okay, he said 220, I know he meant 28. So we're clear for the ILS, so I'm going to be arming NAV now. Pretty soon, I expect. Okay, everything else is all set up. Field is in sight over there. We're about to level off, a thousand feet to go. Q 
speed hold here. Altitude capture and leveling off now. Glide slope is alive. Gonna drop eight degrees of flaps. Wanna maintain about 210 for now. 16 miles out. We should intercept just about. There it goes. Got movement on the localizer. And localizer captured. So this thing's going to go over to runway heading once we're there. Let the thing settle. It's kind of uh, not really super accurate. We'll maintain about 200 feet, 300 knots here. So I'm going to be setting this down to 200. Now we got glide slope movement, so arming approach. We must have a 5 Alpha Frankfurt Director. Good evening. Identified XX Island Zulu 25 right. Tower is on 119er decimal 9er. So I'm pre tuning that into, net, into COM 1. Slowing that down to 880. And we'll be doing flaps 20. And the line one two two seven contact Frankfurt Tower frequency one one nine at decimal nine. Bye bye. Happy landing. Tower on nineteen nine. Our hands on line twelve twenty seven. Good day. Thanks. Okay. Glide slope is intercepted. Frankfurt Tower. Good evening. Hands on line twelve twenty seven on the ILS two five left. Gears coming down. Speed brake armed. Uh, Hansa Line 1227. Hansa Line 1227, Frankfurt Hodge. Evening with 240 degrees, 1 north, runway 255, head to land. 25 left, clear the line, Hansa Line 1227. Okay. Come in at third stage of flaps. Gear is down, three greens. After, well, wait up before about six miles out, and I didn't set my minimums, of course. Which would be. I'm terrible at this. 570 feet, apparently. So there they are. Actually, it's 200 feet. It's 500 feet probably above sea level, but whatever. Okay, full flaps. Wanted to maintain up to six knot miles out, but slung down a few final approach speed now. I don't think we got anybody behind us, and even if we do, whatever they're gonna, what are gonna, what are they gonna do? Spank us? Okay, pretty well established now. Two thousand feet above ground level is the beautiful city of Frankfurt. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll do the before landing checklist now. Flight attendants is advised. Oh, passenger uh, signs, thrust reverses are armed. Landing gear down, flaps full. Before and landing checklist the complete. Sorry, I can't see the button here. What is the other thing? 28 entry, And continuing the approach, I expect we'll be able to exit on Mike 17. Then we'll cross runway 25 center. Okay. Turning off the autopilot now, my my airplane.
trimming, trimming. Keeping the thing always in trim so that I have minimum uh, control inputs here. Go around altitude was not set actually, so we'll set that up in here now. Seven thousand, five thousand is set, and now maintaining 1, the approach. One thousand is checked. Minimums are set to five seventy. It's actually probably two hundred feet, but I don't care. We got nice visual. We could turn the flight director off now and just land visually if we wanted to. But I find it kind of comfortable to have it. A little high in the approach there. Even though Pappy is still happy with what we're doing here. Minimums. Got a little bit of wind shear now. 500. Landing. 400. Checked. Three hundred. On the center line. Now looking out my window, my mainly. I'm aiming for the Pappy line. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Well, bit of a balloon there. It over here, Mike 17. I'll have us probably taxi across the runway. On the 1227 taxi by our Mike, Mike Watson, Paul Shaw 257. Mike and uh, continue the taxi after which uh, Hansa Line 121 uh, 1227 Mike's and uh, Hansa Line 1227 turn right onto Mike call you back turn right on Mike and uh, stand by Hansa Line 1227 so right on Mike or Mike is over here taxi light is on landing lights off strobes off. Right over here on to Mike. Okay, taxiways appear to be clear. Flaps are coming up, speed brakes are coming up. Thrust reversers disarmed. Okay, let's see where they want to have us go from here. Mike and so Mike one four or something like that. Okay, taxi lights on. Everything else, strobes are off. Landing lights off. Uh, turn on the landing lights. Okay, APU is coming up. Should be available in a second. Okay, let's turn on the bleeds here. In case we need it. Now I need to figure out which taxi we wanted to take me. It's really difficult when you're alone in the cockpit and the controller starts blaring taxi instructions at you while you're still trying to stop the aircraft. Tower Hansel Line 127. Hansel Line 127, continue on Mike. Continue on Mike, Hansel Line 127. 
Okay, parking brake is off. Okay, Mike, and then what? Do they want us to have a taxi out past 25 Center? It's possible. And I can't see nothing here, so we'll turn on the landing lights. Taxi speed limit is 25, so we'll take it up to there and hold her. Traffic appears to be here. Hansa line one two two seven turn to Mike one zero cross two five center. Left on Mike one zero and apron on 1275, Hansa line 1225, 1227. Hansa uh, line 1227, and you are clear to cross 25 center. Clear to cross 25 center, Hansa line 1227, thanks, forgot about that. Okay. 1 zero, Mike, Mike 10. Over here to the left. Clear to cross. Uh, we'll turn on the strobes just in case. Two five center is identified. Uh, we'll check the approach sector and the runway, and it appears to be clear. Okay, we'll be spat out on Lima 6. Frankfurt Apron, Hansa Line 1227 on Lima 6. Okay. Hansa Line 1227, Apron, Blue, Taxi, Stand. Um, that's all we have to say in this intro. Um, that's really Taxi, Stand, Victor 101, Lea Lima, November 3.
taxi lights off. APU is available. Let's see how I'm parking. Yeah, mostly on the line. Just push it a little bit further. Okay, parking brake is set. Got to retune frequencies here so that it don't talk into me, to my ears anymore. APU is available, so engine shut down. And beacon is off. Okay, so that's it. Parking was a chore. Because the guys usually only get the big boys in here, and when they got a tiny little regional flight, they were completely confused by it. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you guys next time, and you have a good day.